Today we're going to be looking at Blender's new amazing curve based hair system, which makes it incredibly easy to make stylized hair. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So diving in, let's look at how we can use the new hair system and how it differentiates. So let's go ahead. We're going to grab an object here that we want to add hair to. And now you'll notice that when you hit shift A and you go under curve, you have a new option for empty hair. So we're going to go ahead and add that. And over here, you'll see that that's actually adding a geometry node. So this new hair based system works through curves and we can edit it through the geometry node editor, as you can see here. Well, what's really great is this opens up the option for us to sculpt and work with these curves. Now, if you accidentally deselect your hair and cannot find the curves, it's because it's actually automatically parented under your mesh here. So you'll have to twirl down that mesh and find that curves here. So let's go ahead, call this hair. Great. And then now that we can dive into sculpt mode with this hair, what you can actually see is that we have all these traditional sculpting tools. Now the particle system has sculpting tools too, but I found that these seem to work a bit better and just be much more intuitive. So let's also tab down here where we can see our object properties. You can open up attributes. You can see your surface and have your UV map and create custom properties there. But we're gonna be focusing on this modifier tab because since this is using a geometry node setup, we can actually stack geometry nodes or alter this one if you want and create some variations and this is how we're going to go about creating our stylized hair now later in this video i'm going to go through all of these here and how to use all these hair tools but first i'm going to show you how to quickly create the stylized hair if that's all you care about so let's go ahead go to geometry nodes here and let's call this stylized hair i'll make a new one there now to show this off we need a couple hair curves to work with so i'm going to go ahead and add some in here so i'll just add just a, a couple hairs there on top so that we can kind of see what we're doing. Perfect. Zoom in there. Now what we're going to do is begin kind of altering our geometry node setup here. Make sure you're under stylized hair here. And first what we're going to do is we're going to add a set curve radius. I'm just going to hit shift A here and look for set curve radius. And we're going to go ahead and put that there. Next we'll go ahead and do a curve to mesh. So let's go ahead. We'll look for a curve to mesh and put that there. And then we're going to want to check fill caps and that's going to prevent it from kind of having those hollow ends. And then let's go ahead and pick a kind of radius for this. Now you can create any profile curve that you want and this will work the same way that it does in the curve menu with beveling. But I'm just going to go ahead and add a curve circle, which you can find under your curve primitives here, curve circle. Go ahead plug that into the profile curve. And I see that we're starting to get a little bit there, but we have this radius here that's set super tiny, which is altering this radius here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a spline parameter. We're going to plug this factor into the radius. And you see that this is backwards and we'll fix that in a second. Great, so now what we're going to do is we can play with this radius and now this radius will control the thickness of the hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine to around 0.5. Now you can make your hair however you want, whether you want it smooth or not. I'm gonna go ahead and give mine more of kind of a chunky look. So I'm gonna set mine down to like four and that'll kind of give me that kind of blocky looking hair or maybe five. And you'll notice here that by default, it's set to smooth. So if you wanna fix that, because in this case, it's not smoothing very well, what you can do is you can set shade smooth node, toss that in there and just uncheck shade smooth. And you can see there that it kind of brings it back to flat shading, which is what we want. Perfect. Now you'll notice that the direction of our hair curve is backwards. So we can actually control the shape of that hair here on the spline parameter using a color ramp. So let's go ahead and we will add a color ramp here and click that. And you can see here that if we move this, that black will kind of taper off, whereas white will bring it in. So if we just go ahead and flip these, already you can see that we're getting the hair in the direction that we want. But generally when you're doing stylized hair or like anime hair, you generally kind of want to have a teardrop shape. So what we can actually do is we can add another node here. We'll make this one black as well. You can see how we're starting to get that shape. And then what we can do is kind of adjust this so that we kind of get kind of a kind of teardrop shape moving out of there, which is what we want. Now you can play with this shape quite a bit. You can adjust the resolution. Perfect. And you can see how that's starting to kind of give us our hair shape. Perfect. And you can go ahead and just play with that shape until you get something you're happy with. You can also take this right here and lighten that up a bit and that'll give it a bit more of kind of like a thicker 
base. And then I don't like it to go out completely to the tip. I kind of like it to end slightly thicker. A bit about our sponsor. Skillshare is a great place to learn in 2022. It's where I got started learning design fundamentals. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of incredible classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They have classes on Blender, character design, productivity, cinematography, illustration, business, and more. I'm a top teacher on the platform, and I host several Blender courses focused on characters in Blender. It's a great place to start learning Blender as I really focus on kind of the basics in these courses and trying to help level up. In my Your First 3D Animation class, I'll walk you through the process of animating your first 3D character. We'll cover the dope sheet, graph editor, and include free character rigs. This class focuses on the basics and it's made for beginners to Blender. It's curated specifically for learning and there are no ads. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So next up, let's take a look at all the tools we have up here. So I'm going to go ahead. Now, depending on your machine, you may or may not want to turn off this geometry nodes because if you go ahead and begin just painting in too many of them at once, it may start to kind of cause lag as it has to go through those calculations. So generally, I leave it off and go back and forth while I'm grooming. Let's take a look at our options up here. So first thing to note is that in this mode, we have the option for spherical or projected. So projected will project straight on and across and go through objects sometimes. And then you can also go over here to the sphere. So let's go ahead and take a look at the various options over here. So of course, up here you have the radius and you can also control that with the F key, just like any other thing in Blender. And of course the pressure sensitivity here. Up here, you can use a sculpt selection. We'll go through that later as we begin grooming our hair. Here we have a sphere or a projected section. So sphere will kind of give you a spherical fall off, giving you a much more natural fall off. I go ahead and add these. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. You can kind of see how we begin kind of scraping there, whereas projected is going to kind of fly through all of the hair there. So that's kind of the difference there. Over here on the fall off option, you can change that as well. Now here we have the add hair button, and this will of course let us add hair particles. Up here we can choose the count for the density. And then over here, we can choose to interpolate the length, shape, and point count. And what it will do is accommodate for the hair. So if I go ahead and add, let's add some hair here. And then I come up here and choose length, shape, point count. What it will do is try and kind of match these settings so that as we're adding hair after we already have a full groom, it will make it easier to add additional hairs in. So I'm just going to turn those off for now. Down here, you can choose how many points are on your curve and also the length of your curve as well. With, of course, over here, front face only, allowing it to only affect the vertices that are facing you in the view. Over here, we have the minus button, which just lets you get rid of all of those. Go ahead, add those back in. And then down here, we have the density brush. Now this density brush is great because it allows us to kind of just paint in density. And you can see up here that we have these various settings here. So we have this one here, which will automatically try and determine how many curves you should be adding. This one will add new curves between existing curves with these distances taking into account. And then over here, we have the remove curves option, which will remove root points who are too close. So what we can do is a lot of times just leave this on auto, set your max amount on count, and then of course, kind of the distance minimum. So this is really great that after you've kind of gotten your base hair in, you can go in here and kind of begin painting in some additional hair as well. And of course have control over the curve shape here. So this is a really good way to kind of add those small hairs in later. Now the comb brush works exactly as you would expect, but with the sphere option, it just works a lot better. And these curves just are a little bit easier to work with, in my opinion. So taking a look here, we have the snake hook. Now this is really great. This allows you to kind of grab things and then just hook them out. So if you're building a mustache or some kind of crazy hairstyle, this would be a really easy way to go about grabbing that hair. And then over here, we have the grow shrink. This will just allow you to kind of grow different hair. So you can see here that we have some of the shorter hair and we maybe wanna kind of pull that out just a bit more with the pinch, exactly what you expect. And we'll kind of pinch that hair together. And like I said, all of these just feel much better with this new spherical option. Down here, we have the puff, which will allow you to go ahead and kind of puff your hair out. This is again, really great if you kind of wanna comb something down, for example. And then you can go ahead, grab the puff there and just 
kind of puff all that hair back up so it's not pulled into your surface. Then we have the smooth button, which will go ahead and kind of smooth these along a parallel line. And then lastly, we have the slide button here. And the slide button's great because when you have these kind of like little pieces of hair here, you can actually grab these particles and just kind of pull these out a bit. And then you can come back up here with the grow and shrink. And you can hold control on any of these to do the inverse. And you can just kind of click control there and start shrinking. So that's like a really easy way you can kind of build it out. So one last thing I want to show you is that if you have these kind of like particles on any object here and you want to convert this to a particle system, you can go ahead, tab out on object mode, grab the curve system there, and then you can search and type in convert curves to particles. And you'll see that you get the option to convert it to a particle system. So what you can go ahead and do is delete those curves and you'll see that now it's a particle system on your object here. And then you can go ahead and come down here to the children, add some simple children, and then you'll have access to all the kind of typical ways you can to control it. So this is a good way to paint the hair on your character and then easily add some kind of roughness and randomness down here as well. I have an entire video on how to use this particle hair system as well. So check that out if you need. this new update focuses on stylized materials. The pack is now on sale to celebrate this new update and will continue through the Blender Market Sale for 25% off. So if you'd like to learn more, check it out in the description below.